Yeah. All right, meeting come to order. Thank you everyone for coming. First on our list is a continuation from last time for 5 Harding Street. from Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, since the last meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, we did a site walk, uh, Chairman and I and a couple of members of the commission, and Nancy, um, and we basically just to familiarize everybody with the site and go over some of the things, and Ms. White had, uh, had written up some comments, and uh, we talk about those things in the field. Uh, and also, um, the members of the commission asked me to respond in writing to those comments. So um, I did, and I'll go over those things. These are, there's been some slight revisions to the plans, but these are four copies, hard copies of the plans. I had gotten you four copies of the, the prior set last time, so there's four copies of them. All right, now, is, is this significantly different from anything? It's we've... barely different. It's, it includes, uh, the fire chief was also with us on the site walk, uh -huh. and he asked for a hydrant. I added that to the plans, and we had discussed that um, as part of the um, requirements, the stormwater management <coughs> standard requirements. Um, I did, had not included a pre-treatment prior to the treatment. So I added that into the plans, which I think is an important thing and something good that um, Lenore had All right, in that, to in that case, then I'll ask for a, a vote to accept this plan since it is. Yeah, I will, I'd make that motion that even though it's minor stuff, just to tell everyone right. you want sure. to make the motion that we vote to. Vote so right. to accept the new plans. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 So um, I can go over the, I can go through the items if you'd like. Yes, uh, please. <clears throat> The first one um, Ms. White had mentioned was the, and we talked about it at the last meeting and at, um, and at the site walk. In fact, we, all of these we did, but uh, we'll go over them again. And um, it, it had to do with the 33% calculation of the riverfront area um, on the site. And what, what it's, that was based on where the property line was, how much riverfront area we had on the site, and actually how much was disturbed based on the tree line out there. So I, I double-checked the calculation, and that was correct. But like I stated at the last um, meeting, we're not proposing to do anything outside the limit of, uh, of what's already been impacted. The trees have already been cut. So if that number were 28 or 5 or 87 or 99, it would have met. We're still just developing in that area that where the trees have already been cut in that riverfront area. The second issue was uh, wetlands flags and Absolutely, we did not look at every wetlands flag when we were out there. Uh, there are hundreds of them. Uh, the, the, all the areas we looked at, the flags were intact, though. We found them. Uh, when we looked, wherever we looked for a flag, we ended up finding them. So, but I'm sure there are some missing. I'm positive of that, uh, just for the fact that there's hundreds of them out there. So rather than utilize the wetlands flags and go through the expense and time associated with re re rehanging whatever flags aren't there, I suggested that we um, put in before the first phase of construction, we, we stake out, uh, serve, do a field survey and stake out the actual uh, erosion control line and put in that erosion control barrier is the first thing to do on the project. And that will create a physical barrier that's going to be, let's not go across this. And that's within the wetlands boundary everywhere. It's an upland of the wetlands boundary everywhere. Um, <clears throat> There was a question, there's a note on the plans, and it's up here, and it has to do with the location of the brook. And I, I, I checked with the surveyor, um, and I just want to, I, I drew up this plan and highlighted it, just to show you this. The brook itself, where there's actually water, where the water is flowing, is the property line. By deed, they own to the center of the brook. 
So that note is only associated with the location, the actual location of the water flow for the brook. The bank, the upper, the top of the bank of the uh, of the Pacoy Brook is uh, is highlighted in green here. So the actual flow of the river is the blue. The bank, which is what your concern is as a board, that's the outer limit of of the river, not the actual flow. I'm sorry? The limit or the outer limit? Outer. Well, if you look at it, the, here's the, the blue is the brook itself. The top of the bank is in green. And then we, the offset for the inner and outer riparian zones are in orange. And you can see those offset from the green. So in fact, in this area, it's about 250 feet from the actual river to the top of the bank that was flagged. So I just want everybody to, on the board to understand that um, the, 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 this is the actual line that was uh, flagged and located by survey. And that's what's represented on this plan. The blue line and the note have to do with the property line that goes to the river. And that can change a little bit over time. But so again, <coughs> It's the upper bank that's shown on the plans. That's what this commission is concerned with, not the actual river. In fact, if we offset the actual river, the, the riparian zone would have been on this side of the bank in this area. It's about 250 feet away there. So I hope, I hope we get that point across properly. Um, <clears throat> the status of the NHESP review is the next part of it. And I just wanted to let you know that, like I stated at the last meeting, it's an ongoing process, and it has been going on for over a year. Um, we, I checked yesterday with NHESP, and they, did, they have already established that what this is is what's called a take. So that's why we have to go get a state permit associated with this to do this, because we it is considered a take, because we're, we're dealing with more than five acres of impact here. Um, so that has already been determined. Um, we are in that process. We've actually filed with them the actual survey drawing that shows the, um, the land that's, um, <clears throat> that we would be giving to them for a conservation restriction, or giving up to a conservation restriction. And uh, so we're there, we just don't have an updated letter from them. So we're in the process, and that's where that stands. Um, well, to clarify that, they wanted the planning board to sign off, they didn't have to change the letter. So the planning board wants them to sign off. So that's an excellent there. point. Yeah, and we're giving you. away, we're giving what? It's 21 point nine, it's 20 point nine six acres, yeah. according to the actual survey. Do you want so this is the actual draft. This is in. Uh, this is the draft plan. The draft because NHESP has not commented on it. Um, the entire property shown on the plan with the thick black line. The hatched areas. Uh, what is the what the NHESP program is interested in? conserving as with the conservation restriction. And that hatched area is equals a total of 20.96 acres. So it's essentially 20 acres of land that's gonna have a conservation restriction on it. The development is in this area here. This area here that are wetlands, the area towards Pocoy Brook are wetlands that can never be touched. But um, the just so the board is aware, NHESP was not interested in that area. They said that that was considered neutral area, whatever that means. It's neither good nor bad for the turtles. So they weren't interested in that area. And I, to be honest with you, I don't understand that <laughs> comment. But heard them use habitat. That term. Isn't that strange? It's a habitat issue. Were they looking for south-facing sandy soils and wetlands generally unacceptable for okay. that? So, they, so even though it's flagged as habitat area, they're not interested in conserving it as habitat area. That's my understanding. So, um, the stormwater um, report, Lenore correctly points out that uh, we had not given enough detail on that. Um, so what we did, and I mentioned this again at the site walk, 
I, took, I, re, I went back and looked again at the stormwater management guidelines and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it, one of the things that I had left out in, not in all areas, but in a couple of them, was that we didn't have a pretreatment device. So what I did is I went back in, uh, we added uh, catch basins with deep sumps as pretreatment device, then discharging to storm septic units, which also we had, uh, we were using first defense units in the prior sets of drivers. But as I mentioned out in the field, um, the stormwater management guidelines say it has to meet with the, it has to be in conformance with the STEP program. STEP program does not exist anymore, but prior to act not existing anymore, they had already approved the storm sector. So I changed it, it's basically the same uh, technology, but I flip-flopped the first defense unit with the storm sector just to meet that requirement. So now we're going from the pretreatment device to the storm scepters, which are the approved treatment device for um, prior to discharge into uh, um, these sensitive wetland areas. And then after that, it goes into our detention basins, which then detain the water, let it cool for one thing, but also there's additional treatment associated with that. So we're, we got belt suspenders and suspenders on this thing. So I'm very confident with the design and what, what we're proposing out here. Um, then there was the question of the wetland areas um, off cro uh, Cross Street and uh, heavy equipment had access to the site. So we looked at it and it was very clear that um, that had happened, heavy equipment had access to that lot of land off Cross Street. Um, we did check, there was a question about uh, culvert. We did not see any intermittent stream, so. There's a stream channel there, and so it would be defined as an intermittent stream where the, where the roadway, well, where the heavy equipment came across that area, and I had photographs of it, which I have here. We looked, we, yeah, we looked at the site. We, I don't well, know, that's more for the commission to, to discuss. We looked at it, did not see an intermittent stream. We did a look, channel. We did, did look for a culvert and didn't see, we found a culvert, though, the one culvert that we found was in perfect working order, so. Um, I think there's actually a name for that. I can show you it's a bit uh, There's so many streams all over it, it, the place. It came that. up with the previous application some years back. I can't remember the name vaguely. You know, one of the Indian sounding names, Wee Wee Ticket or something like that. You know? Any memory of that, Bob? I'm sorry, I was again. Do you have any memory of the, the name of that intermittent water course? No. The first time this came up? No. It comes down pretty much from Cross Street and goes um, alongside the gravel road. And it was pretty, there was a lot of vegetation that had been cut down. It comes down right through here. Yeah, right. And there was, uh, this was the only culvert that we found. Yeah, I, I wasn't claiming there was a culvert problem, but what I did no, the, say was... No, the, the commission members mentioned that. Yeah, it yeah what I did say was that the heavy equipment had come across here. And, you know, they didn't come down here. They came down here and across. And this was all wetland down here. Actually, the, this this flags, um, it said S flag, so I was yeah, kind of confused. This flags is flagged wetland on either side of right, the road. Right, yeah. that's right, which, are, which is not shown on your plan of record here. Well, Joe, I think if anyone knows the names of those streams, it's, it's going to be Linda. Linda Grubb. And, uh, yeah. Maybe Mike. Like, the one, but that was over. If you look at that existing conditions plan, you can yeah. see that. Wetlands here and wetlands here. Well, this, so. this, this was the only plan I had. So um, when I looked at it, it was kind of interesting because there are wetlands along this side here. Yeah, this, this, is, this is where the flag's up here. And it was an S21 flag that was, uh, I couldn't even, yeah. I can't yeah, I know. So I was S confused as well. S21, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 20, that's, so that's 23. Right. Right, so that's so, where the alteration is. Yeah, that's where that culvert was that the commission asked, it was concerned with. So, it should be. so, we did look at it with the commission members. So, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. 
Okay, well, I'm going to start off with the normal. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Um, I just got this information today, and you know your explanation. I appreciate that. I would like some time to think it over and at least think about it rather than sure. having it presented at the public meeting. So that would be my first request. My second request would be that you understand that the Wetlands Protection Act and the Riverfront stuff talks about degraded riverfront area. And that's exactly what your analysis points to, is that you have 33% degraded areas out there. Degraded areas are specifically defined in the regulations as old dumping grounds, impervious areas, um, areas with lack of topsoil. So when I visited the site, I didn't find any of those things. So that's really my question in the first point. It's not about where the riverfront is or where the property lines are, but where are you finding these degraded areas, which I hoped we could look at maybe during a site inspection, but um, from the chairman, I understand I'm not allowed on the property anymore. So that, with that, I really can't advise the commission very well. Um, but the degraded areas, I'm still quite puzzled by. Um, the, the whole basis for this project was based on um, the, I don't know if you were associated with the commission at all, in uh, 2010 when the, when the supermarket was proposed and approved on this site. Yep. Um, and that's what um, this whole project was based on that. Um, Which the, is expired, the, right? I mean, the end right of course. Yeah, of course. long since expired. Um, this site, as you may or may not know, was uh, a mink farm, uh, a nursery, mm -hmm. and the most uh, the significant amount of the area. I'm surprised to say that you didn't see the lack of topsoil. I mean, you see, there's, there's, you there's see plenty of topsoil. The there's plenty of vegetation out there. I mean, I dug in well, test pits. And I just so you know, I, I submitted a bunch of. Uh, I don't know, 10 or so historic photographs, aerial photographs oh, yeah. to you, Mr. Bouchard, yeah. um, because I was concerned with that. Current and conditions dictate. I mean, it may have been it something. It went up to 2018. It was all the way, it went from, and nothing's changed in the past 10 years, and that's what right, the but, basis of this But the degraded project. areas are not present. Degraded meaning dumping grounds, impervious. Where are they? You, but, you know, your whole project is based on the fact that you have all these degraded areas out well, there, and frankly, I, I don't see them. Okay. Well, that's, uh, the, this commission thought otherwise when they granted a, uh, a notice of intent that was for the, many for years the project. Ago. Years ago. Yeah. That may be the case, but not, nothing's been done to the site. It's the right. same site. It's, it's anything. It's grown even more. It's exactly the same site. So that would be my one question. My other question is, well, it's more a point to the commission that um, natural heritage, you, you have to give them 30 days from the time you receive the notice of intent. So I think the notice of intent was dated October 5th. So you have until November 5th to before you, under the regulations, if, you know, you have 30 days or by the time they give you something in writing. So I would suggest that you don't issue until at least those 30 days have elapsed. Why? Because of the regulation. It says you need 30 days after after the notice of intent. It says made. you have to wait 30 days, yes. or you ha you can wait 30. Days. It says you either get a response or you wait 30 days. That's under 10.59. It's it's been our policy, right or wrong, to close hearings uh, pending receipt of of uh, information or or contingent in case. On. Yeah, contingent on. Is that legitimate? Well, I mean, I would say, you know, I, 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 the regulations are pretty clear. You know, you wait the 30 days or you get a letter. You know, I don't, I'm not, you know, that's, that's what they say. I'm not aware of that regulation. It very well could be the case. But like I said, we've been dealing with them for, we have a, a, a letter that states that this is a taking. They've been looking at this for over a year. Um, so... Um, we're waiting for that updated letter, but it's already been determined by NHESP that there's a taking here and we need a state permit. Nothing can be done on this site um, in relation to this proposed project until we get that state permit. So, regardless of what this board does, Mr. Colon, you can't go building this building tomorrow. So we could make, we could approve contingent on approval by... 
I don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Well, that's what we've been It seems like, yeah, it seems like that would be the case. Timing-wise, it works either way. When must the notice of intent submitted? Does anybody have a... Oh. It should be on the... Uh, uh, September 25th, I have this letter dated, so October 25th is what? What's the date? That's exactly 20th. 30 days. It's yeah. 30 days in September. Does right. It? So that would be a 30 days, but... I'm, I'm just advising you that that's what the regulations say. Okay. But. Uh, so you better do more. Um, the new um, TSS sheets, do you have any new sheets to show how you meet that 44% pretreatment for the um, new design that you've installed? The, we're not... We're not the forty-four percent pretreatment is for infiltration. We're not infiltrating on the site. You mentioned that you added a new structure, the storm scepter. Pretreat. We added. We put in uh, deep sump catch basins, mm -hmm. then storm scepters, then detention basin. There's no. There's no right. infiltration. So Did you update the TSS worksheets? No. We didn't, we didn't feel the need to because we already in that, we already exceed the eighty percent TSS. Yeah, you're, you're inside that. Yeah. But we'd be we'd be well beyond that. Might help to have it in the record, but. And what kind of uses do you anticipate? Because the, the only reason I ask is one of the stormwater standards addresses um, lands with higher pollutant loads. And you know how you have it's to add some essentially sort of contractor bays, like it's essentially for. Of course, there's nobody knows right now exactly what each use is going to be. Mm -hmm. But the anticipating uses for, uh, say, a plumber to have store supplies here, maybe his construction vehicle, mm -hmm. show up in the morning, grab that vehicle, and go, and come back at the end of the day. Does it trigger any of those higher pollutant loads? Not that I'm aware of, no. I don't think any of the uses will trigger that. Okay, because it is a cold water fishery, which of course is Understood. why we have the stricter standards. Understood. Well, that's why you have some structures that are going to allow Runoff water to cool. Right? Yeah, the, the most important thing is the roof runoff is essentially it's a metal roof. It's a proposed metal roof that's going to be hot. We're yep. infiltrating that roof runoff, so there's not we're not going to have to deal with the heat from that roof. And again, like I mentioned, we treat fully treat all the runoff from the remainder of the site prior to it going into the detention basins. Goes into the detention basin just like the name implies. Detention. It's going to take, a, uh, in, in, on average, a quite a bit of time to go out of that, to get in, detain, go up, meter out slowly out of the detention basins. And then in both cases, our discharges are located over 200 feet, approximately 250 feet from the actual brooks on either side of the project. So you have the detention and the brooks, the, the distance to the brooks all the land that's going to significantly cool that, with that water. I, the only issue I have outstanding is the dense, I mean, the um, previously disturbed, degraded areas, which I don't, I don't see present. But that's my biggest concern, frankly. Bob? I just say, I've been the one working with natural hazards with Jamie and stuff for almost a year and a half. This project, we took a look at everything you guys approved for the supermarket. The roof getting too hot and the colors and all the different stuff. I never knew this much about cold fish and all this other stuff, turtles, in my life. I somehow am lucky enough to make 56 years of it half my year. They, they think this project is so much better in that location than what we've already approved. I mean, they, they have the letter, they started drawing it, and then because of the zoning board, they, they actually had the draft letter there. The first meeting, I said, what can I do here? And he said, well, we have this approved for the supermarket. You can do that. I didn't want to build a giant building and all that pavement. So we worked with them, went over all the time. I mean, this is, compared to that, this is nothing. This, this is nothing. That, like, I don't even, I really don't understand why we're still having problems with this. This is so much less of an impact than what you've already approved. I, I just, I'm lost. I just don't understand it. So, so question for the applicant. Do you have any kind of restrictive covenant proposed on this built in other words some guy says oh i want to rent a couple of bays or lease a couple of bays and i want to do you know sandblasting and painting and degreasing of engine pots or something well they make me put 
grease traps and all the units. But I mean, that type of work you'd need a special permit for anyway. We're not proposing that. Yeah, it's There's mostly a storage. We're not proposing any of that kind it's of stuff. It's one step like up that. from Lakeville self storage. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's basically for a little. These are popular everywhere. Across from yep. Fishers, they built one on the main road. They're all over the place. A, a little contractor that he can't keep his trucks in his neighborhood anymore on his driveway. He needs a place to pack his truck, leave his stock. We're going to. So these are service. not designed to be working garages. No, because that's not industrial. We're not going to be building or doing anything on working in them. Okay. But, and we're going to offer service for the people that is going to be a receptionist. So if somebody had a, a plumber had stock delivered, we can open the garage remotely, let them make a delivery. The guy comes in at night, loads his truck, and goes the next morning. Yeah. This is like su such low impact compared to the hundreds of cars every day and all the other issues that were there. We had to the supermarket that they had. Yeah, exactly. And then somewhere along the line, wasn't there a proposal for a multiplex? Oh, yeah. All sorts of stuff. The other thing. Then they wanted to put a park place in there. They were trying to get a big zone to put a park place in there. They're the ones who flagged it the you, last you, time. You're saying that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't judge anymore. <laughs> <coughs> Any other comments from the commission? If not, how about uh, residents or butters? Do we have anyone who would like to be heard? Yeah, I'm not. Do you identify yourself, please? David Morris, Cross Country. I live on 37. Hey, could you come up to the microphone to speak, please? So, I'm David Morrissey. I live on 37 Cross Street. Um, these flags you guys talk about, they mean nothing to me. Wouldn't even know them if I tripped over them. Who put them there? Are they still valid? Is it still legitimate today? There's Based on what I heard, maybe not. This, the site has a long history. And I think the, the flags that may still be there date back to 2008 when the ANRAD was, was done. That was to actually delineate the wetlands. Some of those remain. Uh, there have been additional flags for subsequent uh, proposals, one in 2010, 2014. Um, some have been, are still there, some have been replaced. Refreshed, yeah. The uh, S flags were originally from SciTech, right? Oh. Yeah. The, the, the problem, the, one of the reasons why we, we had a problem with the, the first go around was that the, the plans that we had did not identify all the flags. Uh, it was hard to, <coughs> to uh, trace them on the, on the plan, but when we went out in the field, we were able to correlate them um, with, with the, the assistance of the, uh, the Rion flags. So I think we've got a better idea now. So is, are these legitimate today? Is it something you can rely on? Does it have to be redone? The ones, the ones that we reviewed were, were consistent, were, were accurate. So if they place a flag, how long is that flag valid for? There's no set time limit. No. Mr. Chairman? Yes. When they place the flags, they're surveyed. Well, that flag there, and the surveyor comes in, he surveys the flag, and that's how it's identified on there. So even if the plan's gone, <clears throat> the flag was surveyed, and it's on a plan that was approved by this commission, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So that would have been the kid from <coughs> the place in New Bedford recently that was at my house. From SIPAC? Was it, was that uh, the I have this kind of normal a little bit. Okay, so these are still good. I don't know, Rod. I don't know. So Bob brought up a good point about traffic. Was there a traffic study? This may not be relevant here, but was there a traffic study done in yeah. regards to this? The market basket one. Yeah. 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 The market basket did. There, were, there was an increase in, like, I believe, thousands of cars per day. Uh, something like this, the scale of traffic is so small. that. In fact, uh, weren't they going to have, have to put... Was going to they had to widen. <coughs> widen the and yeah. Didn't yes. they have to put controls? Were there to be lights there? At designated turning lane? There was yeah, definitely yeah. designated turning lanes yeah. in both directions, yeah. but yeah. I don't know about a set of lights. It may have been a, it may have been something they were looking at. It's very yeah. difficult to get lights approved. Yeah. So 
I don't think that really answered the question. Do, did we need a traffic study for this project? Well, and is this the wrong place to ask? This is the, it is. the planning board. That's not. But I can answer it. It's uh, the planning board felt that it was such a small amount of traffic that it would not be increasing. I believe the traffic on Route 44 is somewhere in the neighborhood of 25,000 vehicles per day. And from something like this, you may get maybe an additional 150 trips a day. So it's it's just not gonna, it's, it's, it's an imperceptible, it's an increase, but it's an imperceptible increase in traffic. It's it's not like the impact you would get from a supermarket where you're getting literally cars coming in every yeah, five minutes. Yeah, unless they come out, come down cross street. So there's gonna there be no way for them to access yeah, cross That's street. one of the reasons why we, we are not yeah, accessing over the dirt road. Well, they can, cross well, it's a public road, so they sure. have the right oh, to, to travel on it. So, but for the record, that land that I own goes all the way up to Cross Street. Mm -hmm. Because of the previous permits and the neighbor's concerns, we are blocking that off and we are not doing it. I could legally go out Cross Street also and put all that traffic against you guys. Right. I've gone out of my way not to do that. Right. We've talked about that. Yeah. So, I don't, know, I, so I, don't get, I don't understand the problem. I'm not putting all that traffic on Cross Street. I'm the resident. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. So well, do you speak. want all the traffic going out that way? Can we stay no. focused so. on the plan, please? So, so, the chair. so the chair. my last question, this is a mystery, an absolute mystery. Who clear cut 39 Cross Street all the way through? Now, I have a picture of the truck on my phone. It's the second time it's come up and nobody's wanted to fess up to it. It's a bit presumptuous to just clear cut mm -hmm. basically 40 feet mm -hmm. by 100 feet into five housing. This is not on one occasion, twice. The first one, the first time, they went back about sixty feet. The second time, which was only a few weeks ago, they went another sixty feet all the way out to the, uh, I guess what you'd call a fire access road. Mm -hmm. That kind of bothers me, and it seems like this project is being pushed through as fast as it can. Not only here, but on the planning board. And I listened to them the other night, and I was just dumbfounded. So. As a resident, I'm concerned. I don't want to prevent progress, but I want to know what I'm in for, too. We don't know what this place is going to use, be used for. He can't answer that question. I've asked him multiple times, whether it's storage or whether it's repair, what types of businesses. You know, we've got kids in this neighborhood. There's no, nothing preventing a landscaper from dumping 500 pounds of fertilizer at the back of the property. Well, they don't allow us to see any, but you can't bring that any of any. that, but any the point is, I want to make sure it's right for us. That's all. And, well, and I'm still quite dumbfounded that nobody here has admitted that they've taken their heavy equipment and cleared that out. That, My daughter didn't do it. That, there, was, there were percolation tests done on that lot. Um, we went out and looked at it the other day, and to say that that lot was clear-cut is a s significant exaggeration of what was done out there. You're allowed to cut down trees to go do a percolation test. Um, that's what was done. That's not, that's not part of what, what's in front of this commission tonight. This plan is what's in front of the commission. And again, this isn't a conservation commission issue, but what Mr. Pellucci is proposing here is allowed by zoning. So if you have a problem with what he's proposing, you should go talk and try to get the zoning changed around town to something sure. that you would be more happy with. So when no. you say clear cut, are you talking specifically about a long cross street? I am talking about 39 cross street okay. at the speed limit sign. Mm -hmm. There is a path that was cleared mm -hmm. 40 mm -hmm. feet wide that extends all the way back, all the way to the right to the fire access road. Mm -hmm. It does. The, yeah, first, the first half of it was done two months ago, two and a half months ago. The rest of it was done a month ago, to be fair. All right, Bob, so to the best of your knowledge, your, your, you, you guys not, might be able to explain this better than I can. No, so it was definitely the perk test. For the perk test, yeah. Absolutely, we had reperked the commercial lot and then we perked the three, what we're gonna perceive as three residential mm -hmm. properties. And to do that, we had to drive the machine up through the woods. It was the, it was just the... That's where the wetlands of alteration half. occurred as well. Okay, so the damage you were talking about earlier was a result of that. That's correct. Okay. I don't think I have any more questions. I appreciate it. All right, thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Any other rebutters? 
Okay. Uh, Nancy, do you want to speak? Um, yes. Um, actually, you have the good color map, which is much better than your map of <laughs> which my interest is who's holding the no. conservation strip. So they gave me that plan, and I went to um, see Scott McFadden at Wildlands Trust because we worked on this project together last time. And um, it should be part of natural heritage findings when they have a conservation restriction. They usually dictate who holds the restriction. But well, they want to know who holds the restriction. So that's why I went to Scott because we did all that work last time and had a bunch of piece of land they already have. And he said that I am, I would could be comfortable in saying they're interested, but as you know, it has to go through their board and they have to do a site visit. But they turned down the conservation restriction when it was a market basket. But he agrees that this is a less impact mm -hmm. than the market basket would have been. And he says they're interested, but he has to bring it to his board and they have to do site visits and. They have a whole process they have to do. But that was my personal interest because I worked on it before and I'd like to see Wildlands Trust hold that conservation restriction because I don't think you have much of a chance of anybody else holding it. Sometimes they don't like isolated pieces of land, but they're very interested in Leonard Washburn. And that's all within the area that on the colors of, on the colored map. When it comes to the question of traffic, I've talked to two people who run uh, self-storage places and basically the people who are going here are the people for whom the self-storage places aren't big enough right. and the people at the self-storage can look at their logs for the ins and outs when you punch in the code punch in the card mm -hmm. and so forth it's all between 6 30 7 30 in the morning and then 4 30 to 5 or so in the afternoon pretty much the rest of the day not a lot of activity. But this access is from 44 anyway. Yes. It doesn't, there's no access to this. No project. access from Cross Street. From Cross Street. Yeah. Uh, Bob's not here, but uh, I would suggest that as uh, one of the uh, uh, conditions in, in, in the order of conditions will be that uh, you will barricade that road to, to prevent traffic, uh, starting with construction and maintaining it. It, it would def yeah, we don't have a problem doing that for this. It, if, when, if and when that, uh, those three residential properties are developed, they may need to access it from somewhere down in that area. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's going to be on this or not, but uh, we can definitely barricade that near the project. Okay. And if you need to establish it, uh, access somewhere else, that would be subject of a separate filing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, all that will be done uh, separately. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I just ask one other question? If there was a change in that plan, I gave an entire set of plans to Wildlands Trust, so if there was any change, can we get something so they see what the change was? I can get you a set of plans that would be imperceptible to them. The limits of the project didn't change at all. I okay. added a couple of catch basins, and I added a fire hydrant like the fire chief asked for. Are those catch so basins are important to the Coldwater co Trust Street? Well, that pre -tree, they, they provide that pre -tree. We had yeah. in, we had okay. in yeah. propriety yeah. Yeah. devices, yeah. so they're acting as a, um, right. uh, right. as a, a water quality unit and a catch basin at the same time. We, because of the stormwater management regulations, uh, I added right. a pre-treatment right. device. So now it goes. But is there some little yeah. work you can give them? There's a little plan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The yeah. Little plan. <laughs> well, I don't know how educated the board is. Yeah, we'll, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll that that's going to be one of their major concerns is a whole lot of travel issues. So I just want to make sure they have the proper. No problem. I'll be there for the site walk with them. So okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. Question for the applicant. Any concern from Mass Highway interest in your that activity? Yeah, yeah well, no, we, no, because they don't see it as a nothing like a movie theater or a no. you know. Are you imagine the crowds the leaving a movie store, theater when the movie's time. over, right? Yeah. No? Okay. We are going to have to get a Mass Highway access permit. To you get a get crib cut, essentially. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. exactly. Even though one exists. Still technically still exists. Mm -hmm. if, if, if there's a change in use, change in you're supposed it. Okay. to get a new okay. permit, regardless of if the geometry changes or not, you're still supposed to <clears throat> go get one. So. Usually, in our um, 
order conditions, we ask that we be notified uh, when you begin construction. Uh, I would like to make that recommendation, but to also take it a little further, I'd like to see, in, in uh, as a result of the order of conditions, uh, a list of major milestones during which uh, we would ask to be notified. Um, for example, the uh, when you close off the road, when you uh, establish that berm uh, surrounding, I think, two sides that Bob was talking mm -hmm. about as a, as a barrier, mm -hmm. we'd like to inspect that. And any other uh, major milestones, uh, replacement of the culvert, uh, any changes, which you normally would notify us anyway, but I would like to see a list of what you deem to be significant milestones uh, and that we can check off uh, appropriately as, as time goes by. I have no, do you have any problem with that, Mr. Pellucci? To no, that. whatever you want. If you want all that stuff, we'll tell you all those times. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And the, the reason being, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of interest in, in this project, as, as, we, as we know. Uh, but very often, uh, even on smaller projects, when they begin, we get, we get phone calls. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. Why is this going on? Why are they filling wetlands? Why are they blasting? And nine times out of ten, it's, it's absolutely nothing. But I want to know what's going on so that I can give them accurate responses sense. to those questions. Okay? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, any other recommendations in our order of conditions? The only thing, as I mentioned, was that area, degraded area. That's my biggest concern about the project. But as far as recommendations go, no. What are you going to use to delineate the, the work area and the, um, the so-called uh, degraded <laughs> area? Are you going to flag it? Are you going to put markers? Yes. We are. We're staking it out for natural heritage um, and for. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Come on up. Um, Speak gonna, to the microphone. We're going to. Jamie Bissonette from Zenith Consulting Engineers. We're going to be staking out the limit of work for. Um, oh, what well, consultant? Do you remember the name? Goddard and Associates, thank you. We're working with Goddard and Associates. Uh, we have to stake out the turtle fencing perimeter prior to any work. Um, we expect that that hopefully will be relatively soon. So as soon as that's up and in, that'll all be staked out survey-wise location, so we know they'll be right on. That gets put in, it gets inspected. We'll call the commission for an inspection at that time as well. Okay. Anyone else wish to comment? Yes? Um, just as, as an observation, these guys seem to be going above and beyond. I don't have a lot of history with the project, but they sure seem to be, to me. Thank you. Doing everything. You know, it's a asked and then some. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's typical of projects that draw drawing on for, uh, for a long period of time and go through a number of iterations and, and it's bound to create kind of stress or just some anxiety as to just what's happening. Uh, I think we've covered most of the issues. And uh, as always, whenever you run into the inevitable field adjustments, we wish to be notified or questioned. You know, something's come up and you go, uh oh, we gotta do a little modification here. I you, think know, you normally would notify us anyway, but... Oh, yeah, you, yeah. you know you guys are my first call. Yeah. And thank you, Lenore, for your, your comments. I appreciate your, your, your efforts to, to straighten us out on this. Uh, so at this point in time, I think it's time to call for a uh, <coughs> for a vote. So does anyone here to make a motion? I'll make a motion. My motion to close the hearing, issue a standard order of conditions along with all the things you just said. <laughs> <laughs> all our special conditions. All the special conditions. <laughs> including a, a plan showing major milestones. Correct. And uh, and that, that will include the, the barricading of the, uh, the alternate access route and notification of any major changes in, in the plan. That's what you meant to say, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now that our break is over, <laughs> I'll read the notice. According to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Wellness Protection Act, we'll be hearing on a notice of intent by Sharon Gonzales to construct a second floor addition over an existing deck area with installation of four sauna tubes within the 100 foot buffer zone of Long Pond. Location of the project is 28 Central Ave, Map 42, Block 24, Lot 02. Public hearing be held on Tuesday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. Good evening, Darren McHales from Foresight Engineering. Um, this property has been before the board a few times. Uh, first for the septic, with the tanks being within the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, and then for an addition to the left side of the house, the large garage rectangle that you see there with the deck off the back. And now we're back to you with a smaller project already within a disturbed area of the lawn. Just proposing to put in four sauna tubes by hand, no machine access is available, uh, and then build a second floor addition over the deck. So very minimal disturbance and everything will be by hand, no material will be left on site, erosion barriers surround the entire site. Uh, we have trees in the remaining yard in between us and the pond. Are they going to support the, the existing deck and build off that? Yes. So they'll cut their holes for the new supports to go right through yep. the deck to the sauna tube and then connect to those supports. Okay. All hand done. All hand up, yeah. It's, Under a deck. The, yeah, the good thing is, is it's sand there, so it'll probably take the corners of the deck off and cut the holes and then hand dig them with a post hole digger. Yeah. Uh, we do not have our natural heritage letter yet, so if you could approve pending, that'd be great. Uh, other than that, I think we have everything required. Yes. I'm assuming that these assessors things are correct. They were older, but yes, probably from the older plan. It might have been some houses sold since then, but the maps and lots are correct. Because as far as I know, Welch is at 33. He may own more than one property. Could be another Welch also. And I didn't think, I thought Goodwin was on Cherry Street and not on Central. 23 is, uh, that's, uh, what's her name? Uh, it's across the street. Yeah. 23 from 24, yeah. Martin. Tara Martin. Martin. Tara, that's Tara's house, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, some of the houses may have sold since the assessors was done. Yeah. But. Okay. Yeah, it's a very small lot. It is a lot of room. Yep, they've they've done a lot to the property. Um, instead of paving the driveway as it originally was, they did pavers out pavers, front. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, to allow for some infiltration. They've done some nice landscaping with the stone wall and there's a gazebo right there next to the rock on uh, the shed and they've you know left the leach field nice and grassed over so no one can drive mm -hmm. over it. They've done a pretty nice job out there. So I, I don't know if this was your question earlier, uh, Joe. But are you going to need to access the lot from either any of the your butters? No, sir. No. Nope. We have enough room where the tanks are to, to walk through. It's about 15 feet wide right there. We're right. just not bringing in any machines. Okay. So no excavators at all. It's it's only four sauna tubes. They'll bring them in with a wheelbarrow and bring the mixer right there and do it the old-fashioned way. You know, I saw a nice 8-inch uh, sauna tube in the median on, on 140 coming home. <laughs> oh! Did you lose one? Yeah, no, it wasn't me. You know. <laughs> one of the beauties of driving around with a pickup truck, you can pick up stuff. Yeah, just sitting there stuff. waiting for someone to grab it. <laughs> no, I don't need a sauna. <clears throat> okay. Is the existing dock uh, permitted dock? Yes. Yeah, that's been there for whatever. And I think we permitted it the second time when we came through for the addition. Okay. Because that was yep. when Nancy was around and that yep. was brought to our attention. And your erosion control is just a siltation fence? Yeah, just a siltation. We we're talking with minimal of four holes, four feet deep, you know, 14 inches around. They're going to be wheeled around the dirt, probably out to the front yard. How big is the addition? About 400 square feet. The deck's about 20 by 20. Slope's about 10 feet from Central Avenue down to the water. What's that? Yes. But it's not too bad because there's some slopes on that side of Central 
<laughs> no, the, ours is pretty gradual. The yeah. driveway is a little steep in the beginning, but then a little bit. <clears throat> all good? Any other comments, questions? No. Yeah, in that case, do I hear a motion? I will do that. I'll make a motion that we close the hearing and issue a, an approval of the work as proposed. And do we want to make it pending to the state? Yeah, well, yeah. Pending, pending the natural heritage. Any, who are we waiting for? Natural heritage. Natural heritage, yep. yeah. They typically come three or four days after the meetings, is what I'm finding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's usually the exactly DP that. number also, but yep. this time the DP number beat it. Okay, uh, so we have a, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tip the sheet. Oh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. John, ship that down to the yeah. captain, please. That's the Gonzales notices. All right, thank okay. you. Thanks, sir. Yep. Good do you night. have a replacement Great. vehicle, by the way? Yeah, I bought a new Tundra. Same truck, <laughs> brand new. <Yeah. laughs> I already put all my stuff on it. All right, here's two. Let me, let's just get Josh's first. And that's going to be for the, the two we've just heard, um, Harding and uh, the Central. I took a look at the minutes and didn't see any particular problem. Oh. Oh. So Mark is stuck over on Martha's Vineyard? Yeah, what a shame, huh? <laughs> Jeez, I, I hate for that to happen. Tough to be stuck. Yeah? It's not like it's nice car. out. <laughs> yeah, it's much better when it's nice out, yeah. Rick Hagerman, I live at 121 Nelson Grove Road, and All right, before you uh, get into it, let me read the, the notice. Okay. To the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Wetlands Protection Act, there will be a hearing on a request for determination of applicability by Richard Hagerman for installation of riprap against their retaining wall. Location of the project is 121 Nelson's Grove Road, Lakeville, Map 57, Block 5, Lot 2. Public hearing be held on Tuesday, October 22nd. Hello. Hi. <laughs> As I said, my name is Rick Hagerman. Um, as Bob just said, I, I have an existing uh, concrete wall that I'm not sure the exact age. It's showing some signs of wear. So I'm just trying to get ahead of, ahead of this. I mean, most, most of the other houses have riprap in front of the walls. For some reason, the previous owner never did it to this house. Um, so I'm looking to put uh, probably roughly 50 ton of stone across the front, about four foot out, three foot high, um, just to get some weight against the wall to prevent any further erosion. What size? Rip wrap. Big. Not two or three hundred pound. Big. Oh, big. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Starting out big and then working my way up to. Placed with a no, nothing. The ice is going to move, or oh, ice just ice sees it as a challenge. You know that. I know that. Okay. Um, so again, I'm just trying to get ahead of it um, because if there was a failure on the wall, would that be a project that I definitely don't want to be involved with? 
In, in the dead of winter, what's the, the thickness of ice that's up against the wall? Uh, well, it's constantly moving. I mean, how high do the pressure worse. ridges get out in front of you? I, I've got a series of pictures of one last year that was just beautiful, the way it just yes, it, speeds it, up. It, uh, probably about four foot higher than my backyard. <clears throat> and again, that's all dependent on the, uh, the depth of the water. Right now, it's very low. So, mm -hmm. okay. Can we do this? Of course. Okay. It's, it's basically, it's a little beyond maintenance. Yeah, I didn't know if, but... Because it's in the water, right? It's, yeah, he's extending. Not now, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a little bit. Not much. <laughs> Very so are you, you obviously, you're going to, how are you going to spread it? How are you going to get that stuff oh, placed right. with a thumb, right? Yes. Yeah. An extra. So, yeah, the person I'm using to do this, we're going to use the uh, Lakeville Hospital as a staging area. So it's going to be all clean stone, store it there, and he's going to move it from there right to my boat ramp, and then from my boat ramp, right, place it alongside the wall. And he can reach everything from your boat yeah. ramp? Oh. Well, not from the, we'll have to work our way down. Down, down the yard the itself. The area. Yes. Okay. And what, what's, I mean, you have a lot of room on that road. What kind, you must be using a relatively small truck or trailer. Yes. Multiple trips. Quite a few trips. <laughs> Quite a few trips. Yes. Yeah. I hope it's a friend so, of yours. Uh, we'll, we'll see at the end of the project. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Before we go any further, yes. for, for the benefit of the viewing audience, we have a classic story about the cement. Oh, yes. There's an area in town many years ago, everyone had riprap. And of course, the ice tries to ride up on the riprap and breaks up. So there's not a lot of pressure on the ground. But when you build that wall, the ice says, oh yeah, you think so, huh? Okay. Crushed the guy's wall after he built it, after two years. So he reinforced it. That lasted about five years. And then he built it again, and what he did was... Angled. No, he didn't angle it. He ran a concrete walkway from the wall to the foundation of his house for further... Hmm. Guess to let, what? To let the almost like a buttress. Pan. Pushed the foundation. Oh, the force of expanding oh, yeah. ice mm. is... Oh, it pops out windows. Yeah. Well, my next door neighbor, I live in Long Pond, yep. and uh, not the guy that owns it now, but the guy before him, poured concrete piers, like walkways out into the water, that, you know, a dock, yeah. and it just tore it apart. They didn't, they didn't incline it. They should have inclined it, so, it, they so just climb up and go over right. right. They and the thing with riprap is, if it gets some pieces get knocked down, you just you yank it back. Right. You know. Whereas with the concrete, instead, uh, now it's a whole rebuilding good. project. Uh, yeah. So, so what's the line? Don't mess with Mother yeah. Nature. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> a lot of power. No. So. Well. Well, I was there this afternoon. Yep. And Rick gave me the grand tour, and I was satisfied with uh, what they plan on doing. So I would recommend that we that we approve it. Okay. So yeah. this is a... It's an RDA. RDA. Okay. So, um, can I make a motion? Well, why don't we let Josh do it? Okay. Make a motion, Josh. Uh, get make the motion minute, you know? and uh, close the hearing on... Okay. 121 Nelson Road. 121 Nelson Road. And approve with our... Well, we issue a negative determination. Uh, right. Uh, negative determination. Negative three determination. Okay. With our standard standard go ahead with the work, right? Okay. I second. All right. We have motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Let me know how that works out because <laughs> <laughs> I might need to do it too. Yeah, you're the guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> to which you and John will do it with his place. It's so, uh, riprap, you can't beat good solid riprap. It's I really. Some, I, I got some big. Big bolts all along my. Yeah. But, but so, it's all starting to loosen up a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's do it too. A few business so items. Do, it too. do you? Well, uh, we'll see how we want to do it. Comes out. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, we do the minutes first. I've already looked at them. I looked at them. I notified Laurie. I don't see any problems. I make a motion to we'll accept the minutes from yeah. September 10th. September 10th. 
Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 There was just one set. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let's take care of this. As, as many of you probably already know, Nancy has expressed interest in rejoining our happy group. <laughs> and we would certainly welcome her uh, back with certain provisions, of course. But we'll send you an order of conditions for it. Um, the, uh, the selectmen have asked for a, uh, a recommendation, which I will do tomorrow. Uh, but they also want us to vote on it, so. I make a motion to recommend Nancy for the vacant seat on the board. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nancy says Yay. no. <laughs> For what it's worth. Yeah, you still need them to listen. give you the, the rubber well, stamp. I feel like Lauren butting in, so I can swallow. You <laughs> butt in? No. <laughs> All right, so we'll be back to a full compliment. Uh, and then, and they said, if you send something tomorrow, I can be down to selections meeting the 28th. Okay. We'll take care of that. It'll be two for one because I'm also going on to talk about the hole in my roof at the beach by my buddy's neck. Oops. Mm -hmm. That needs a new roof. Uh -huh. You know who to talk to? Oh. Don Pissonet. Oh, yeah. He ah. did a nice <laughs> job on that oh. cowboy chair yeah. that nobody has. Still, it ever been a. This is a hundred foot building. I mean, oh, the yeah. peach barn is. Oh, is that the one stories? right on uh, yeah, Long Point Road? No, oh, no, no, that's no. the one back in the field. It's, oh, I it's haven't been there. three of the one on Long back. Point Road. Oh. It's huge. Has Dawn ever been in that building? Has Dawn ever been in the peach barn? Been in the peach barn? I don't know. He'd love the, the way oh, that thing yeah. is built. Oh, yeah. Nate the does. Beads. Nate oh, I bet Nate loves yeah. it. Yeah. Nate's yeah. a carpenter. Yeah. yeah. Well, he it said does. they didn't do it right in the first place, so it's going to be very costly. <laughs> <laughs> How, how far back did they, are they talking about? It's 1927. Oh, okay. Who's right. responsible for that maintenance on that? <laughs> Is APC? Does it fall on no. the conservation? Because no. some, some, no. some of this stuff falls on the conservation. Well, right? yeah, but this falls under the board's life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, they have money. Yeah. 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 Probably <laughs> needs to be on the capital yeah. plan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. Right. Wait, I still yeah. got to be appointed. Anything else on our list here? Just a couple things. Um, you may recall 66 Highland. Uh, that's that's off of uh, well, off of Highland. Uh, it's uh, Paul Turner's uh, single family house. Mm -hmm. um, that the house is complete, mm -hmm. uh, and they are soon going to be asking for a certificate of compliance. I've already been out to inspect it, and I didn't see any any problem with accepting it. Uh, but there is a, a potential glitch in it. Apparently, uh, well, I heard from an attorney, they're going to closing on, on buying the lot, and there were two outstanding orders of condition for this property from 2005 and 2007. Uh, how's your memory? Yes. What's the address? 66 Highland. The house that, well, right on the top the house that was torn down. And right on the corner? The no, 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 no. no. It's kind it's of on the top of the Next to Jody, Jody uh, was the old Lager. chicken coop, right? Wasn't there a chicken coop there? Is that the one? No. Oh. Right next to John Lawrence. Yes. John Gladu. Yeah. John no, no, Joey no. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. You know the house? No. On uh, the same side of the street. Right next door. That, that little teeny one, that belongs to them still. Yeah. There's the mother's house and then there's that little teeny house. If, if you're facing Joni's house, the little teeny house is to the left. This is to the right. Okay. My milk pond is directly behind right, them. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember. remember. I haven't done through the file yet, but because uh, this just came in, but because uh, I talked to Paul some time back, he's got a PNS on the property. Yeah. What's the yeah. number? What's 66. The, 66. No, SE 192 dash. 706. Uh, See, that's not, no, no, that's not. That's not that. But that that might be. What would be the current one? I don't remember. 803. Even 6766 shouldn't be that far back. Yeah. Yeah, it was 2005, 2007. But there's two. There's two outstanding. Yeah. Two outstanding. I, I, I know the people that were at the houses. Was there a vacant lot? Oh, no. There was a house there. Oh. And the house just was set. Oh, I, I know the people. I, I, I can picture all the people that were living there now. There was a, a nurse and her teenage daughter and a friend of hers, Jeremy Martin. <laughs> 
and it was like a forget. Yeah. Did you remember Jeremy? Sitcom. Yeah, yeah. I just, and then I forget the woman who lived there before. Single woman lived there, and the house is just not being kids. Just slowly, you know, deteriorating. You know, uh, I remember when uh, our, our board of health agent uh, before. Um, was well, Lawrence uh, uh, Larry, Larry. Larry. Larry Perry? He was okay. down in in in, uh, in Stoughton, and he was there. And he was, you know, hoping the ceiling wouldn't fall on his head as he walked through. Mm -hmm. So and he con he condemned the building, and they had an auction, and uh, you know, the, the, I think but Paul bought it, I guess, and you know that was you know tore the whole thing down. Just you know, there wasn't really much you could do for it. Started it all over again. You know, so it's a small lot. 1.1 acres, I think, something like that. But anyway. Okay. All right, so that's, that's, that's going to be ongoing. Uh, uh, also, there, there is a, a few house lots off of Janine's Way. Uh, I've looked at a couple of the lots recently. for Janine's Way is? Is off of, um, not Fuller Shores, the next one. Oh, uh, Nelson Shores? Shores? Yeah. That's it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a long, it's like a runway. It's this long, straight road. Uh, and there is, I think there's two houses on, on it now. And the, the abutters from uh, Fuller Shores uh, are complaining that they are getting runoff from this. this uh, oh, this Justine's flood. Way. Yes. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, there is a, they are building a huge barn on, on the property. And some of the residents on the abutters are alleging that it's commercial, not not just residential use. That would uh, be that would be neat. That'd be neat. Oh yeah, he's yeah. he's uh, But they've come to us to see if uh, they claim that there are some wetlands uh, along Fuller Shores that are being impacted by this. Uh, I've inspected the the property with the mar a number of times. I don't see it uh, any any runoff getting, but uh, I'm not there during a storm event either. In, in full disclosure, I was involved with the development of that road. The road, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you know Justine's Way goes down to a cul-de-sac, yep. the cul there's this whole drainage basin mm -hmm. down the left side of that property behind the, the houses on full right. shores yeah. that is supposed to take all that. Yeah. Well, they claim that uh, it's not functioning and, and that there is a um, uh, an area that is silted up and uh, now Bob was involved with this yep. as well, right? Yep. That he had made uh, made a claim in, in a public hearing that he would maintain this uh, the drainage structure. Uh, that is incorrect. And well, it's I'm a, just saying that's what they're it's a uh, private road. They're claiming they're, right. Those houses own that road, mm -hmm. and they are responsible for the maintenance. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's another ongoing situation that you might be. Did you? Did you? You said you looked at it. Yeah, I looked at it. I didn't see any any problem, but I might not have been focused in the right the right area under the right conditions. So. Well, I would go out with you, but I'm not sure I should. <laughs> you said you didn't go out there when it's raining. Much of the time, you don't get the problem when it's raining. You get the problem in the next 12 to 18 hours right. as the soil discharges its water. Yeah. Is it a re is it a result of the construction on the lot? I don't, I can't see it, but uh, I don't have enough information to make that Maybe we need judgment. to make them put filtration Yeah. Well, them. she said there is a plan to, to, to excavate, and she's afraid they're going to do it on her property, not in the road itself. Tell her to have a survey? Yeah, I said that it probably is mostly a, a civil matter, and mm -hmm. she's an attorney, so she should yeah. She should have uh, an appreciation for it. But uh, but anyway, that's that's the story on Yeah, those on that lots anyway. and that road are privately owned now. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, what else? Two more things. I went to a seminar over the weekend on uh, on wetland issues, on uh, identifying problems inside the uh, the buffer zone, especially when there's an overlap with uh, riverfront areas. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff in there that's new that I wasn't aware of, and that uh, the the Harding Street uh, was probably well would will be subject to. Uh, some consideration, so uh, I actually learned quite a bit. I thought it was well, well worthwhile. But while I was there, remember Jen from Outback? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She was there. I was surprised. Uh, yes, because she had gone off to 
Marie's horses or something. Yes, well, she didn't like that. <laughs> and I guess she missed trumping through wetlands, so now she's the agent for Franklin, oh, okay. which ironically, Lenore is their consultant. So it was, it was good to see her. Franklin, she said to say wow. hi to everybody. So. <coughs> but that's it. Not for riding with horses, except they have solid exhaust. <sighs> there you go. And climate change. Motion to adjourn. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.